What's up everybody, welcome back to a brand new video on Lexa Lexus. Today it is match day 6 of the championship. I'm really excited to start predicting again these games. We've got a lot of really, really big games going on this weekend as well. And I feel like we're really going to start getting the season up and running after this game week. This is the updated standings of the prediction league. So guys, left hand side of the screen are the current updated standings after match day 5. So... What is the Gorn fans still leading, but I've closed the gap to one point. Honey Gun's also close behind me. The four kiddos have done well. Jamie Kane's up there. Charlie's up there. There's a lot of us that are fighting for those top places. It is increasingly competitive. And if any of you guys who are new and want to get involved in this competition, all you have to do is one thing. Comment your score predictions for the championship games this weekend in the comments down below. Just as long as it's before they kick off. They will count and if you get a correct score it is three points if you get the correct outcome but not the correct score spot on you get one point so that is how we draft our points if you guys like what we see please give the video a like it's a tremendous help the channel let's aim for 20 likes that'd be a terrifically appreciated please do hit the subscribe button it really does help as we're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers and please also share the channel too all of those things really support the channel but without any further ado let's start predicting these weekend's championship games First game to predict is Luton going up against Sheffield United. Late Friday night game. And what I will say, both of these teams have had a really different start to their season so far. So Luton had a really slow start, actually. But it wasn't necessarily like that they were performing badly. You know, I felt like some of the games actually performed quite well. But they just didn't get anything out of it. And we've seen a common theme of that with many of these teams where they perform well. But because... They do not have the clinical players to finish teams off. They get punished in the end and they end up drawing or losing the game. And Luton have definitely been involved with that. Sheffield United, on the other hand, have been the team that have really been trying to lead every team by example. As they are currently top of the league and the only team so far to break into double figures in terms of points. One, 10 points that they've won so far out of a possible 15, which is two thirds you know, of winning points, a 66% winning points of accuracy. And that's really, really good for Sheffield United to get that sort of points return in that start of the season. Now, it tends to be Sheffield United have got a decent-ish record against this Luton Town side. And I do think Luton at home will make things very, very tricky for Sheffield United. But, I mean, based on the confidence that they got, and despite the injuries that both of these teams have, I do think it narrowly edges Sheffield United for me with the quality they got in that midfield and the clinicalness they got of Indai, who I think will have another great game here. I'm going to go for a narrow 1-0 away win to Sheffield United. But let me know, guys, what you think of that prediction in the comments down below. Next game to predict, and I'm really excited for this one, it's Sunderland versus Norwich. So Alex Neal will be returning to Norwich City, the only team he's actually managed to get out from the championship to the Premier League and to actually have a crack himself as a Premier League manager. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of Norwich fans that will be clapping him away, you know, with giving Norwich some brief Premier League experience at that one season there. He has taken a Sunderland team to a team that I don't think many teams want to play up against, especially at the Stadium of Light right now, where they've got a near perfect um, record at home right now. And I do think it helps with having the crowd on your side. And I do think the players are really performing out of their skin. They really are. I've really been impressed of the strike partnership of Sims and Stewart. It's great that Alex Neal has already found a team he wants to stick with. You know, the common problem with managers when they try and climatize into different leagues or they make many transfers and they try and climatize there, the time it takes to just rejig the squad and to eventually get a starting 11 that you feel satisfied in it can take months, even a full season at times to even get there. But it looks like Sutherland have already established that already, which is fantastic for them. Norwich have managed to pick up a little bit of pace in their season. Now with two wins in a row, a win against Huddersfield and, of course, a win against Mill in their last game. They were very unlucky to lose out in the Carabao Cup to Bournemouth on penalties. 
Maybe a small bit of fatigue can go in there. Not many of the first team players played in that game. But as a prediction, I think Sunderland at home are going to make it really tricky. I was thinking a Sunderland win. But I think based on the form of Josh Sargent, who he'll be gaining a lot more confidence scoring in two consecutive games for Norwich now. I think he'll be on the score sheet for Norwich here. But I think it'll end as a draw. A 1-1 one -one draw I'm going with here. Let me know, guys, what you think of this prediction in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Blackburn going up against Stoke City. So, intriguing seasons and starts for these two teams so far. So, Blackburn had a really rosy start with the only team not to lose for quite a certain amount of time. And then, bang, two consecutive away games hit them. Reading and Sheffield United, two consecutive 3-0 defeats. So, from being... Hard to break down and being able to look very clinical going forward. All of a sudden, all of that leaves the window. And John Dow Thomason has got to try and reignite that confidence. But I do think at home, I think Blackburn do play relatively well. And I think they've got a really good record at Ewood Park. This Stoke City team, I have no idea what to make of it at the moment, unfortunately. I think it's a team with undoubtedly, you know, with amount of potential that they've got. But whether it's all going to gel and whether every single player is going to run, you know, their full potential on the pitch, I don't know. Something just feels very off about Stoke. Very disjointed start that they had over the season. I think there's a lot of pressure on Michael O'Neill. And I do think he'll carry on to this game because I think Blackburn, despite, you know, having those two dreadful games recently, I think they may pick themselves back up again. They had a great um, result actually in the Cowbell Cup and one of only three teams to actually progress to the third round um, in the Cowbell Cup from the Championship. So fair play to Blackburn there. As a prediction, I'm going to edge the team at home. I'm going to go for a 2-1 home victory to Blackburn. But please let me know what you think of that prediction in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Blackpool going up against Bristol City. Bristol City being one of the few other teams in the championship to progress from round two to round three. They did that by beating Wickham by three goals to one away from home. And likewise in Norwich City with Bristol City, they're now starting to kickstart their season right at the right time. And it's crazy how winning two games in a row at this stage of the season can make you jump up to 15 places. It really is that congested right at the start of the season. And I tell you what, Bristol City... Did have to try and, you know, rejuvenate some confidence and to just get rid of the decisions that went against them because a lot of decisions in many key games for Bristol City, I think, went against them. But they didn't feel sorry for themselves. They regrouped brilliant wins against Luton and a brilliant home win against seven side rivals Cardiff City as well. So I think they are going in the right direction now. I just question whether they're going to keep that consistency away from home against a Blackpool team where they've actually started relatively well, a lot better than I expected them at the moment. I still maybe question what they're going to be throughout a whole season, especially if they're going to really rely on the likes of Jerry Yates, who's already had a really big part to the season, probably played a bigger contribution, you know, in the 3-3 draw that we saw with Blackpool against Burnley that he has done in the whole of last season. So Jerry Ace has got a really important role this year. And I do think a lot of championship players in Blackpool definitely going to have to step up their game too. I think this game will be intriguing, but I definitely would say Conway and Vyman, if they start together, they will cause problems. I was almost shocked to see how many chances Bristol City carved against a really robust Cardiff team. As a prediction, I'm going to predict Bristol City to continue their brilliant form. I'm going to go for a 3-1 away victory to Bristol City. Let me know, guys, what you think of that prediction in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Cardiff versus Preston. Now, it's how many people are going to predict nil-nil? I am almost betting on my life that there will be at least five of you predicting a nil-nil draw in this game here. And Cardiff actually will probably not like that because they've actually won all of their home games so far this season. It's pretty much where most of their points have come so far this season. Two consecutive 1-0 home wins in a row against Norwich and Birmingham. Now against this Preston team, still to this day in the championship season, the only team yet to concede a goal. And I think Preston have become history actually going 
the longest team without conceding the goals um, with the start of the season. So Preston have already broken a record in this season, but to only have one goal return in five games is not great. And you would suggest with the XG, Preston are up there in the top six when you create XG. So I definitely think we've seen a lot of these teams where they play well, but they don't get the results they deserve. I talked about it already with Luton Town, and I think Preston have got very similar problems with that as well. They definitely could have had a much better season for what they've had so far, but Preston's season's not been tremendously awful there. I think Cardiff, I'm really liking the involvement of the signings there, but I want to see Ruben Cole play this time. When I saw him introduced on as a substitute against Bristol City, I do think he was one of the very few Cardiff players that really, really took the name by the squad for neck and made some really marauding runs into the box. And I do think Preston will be heavily tested if they have that. And, you know, I think right now, Cardiff, whilst they may not score too many goals, I do think Preston will potentially try and get up the pitch and get some goals here. Cardiff have a really good record against Preston, though. Five wins that they've had against Preston in their last six meetings. So, as a prediction, I was thinking 0-0. I'm tempted, but you know what? I'm going to be a bit different because I guarantee you, if I predict 0-0 this week, it won't finish 0-0. You've heard it here first. You can clip it if you like. I'm going to go 1-0 to Cardiff based on the better record that they've got. Preston have also played in midweek as well against Wolverhampton Wanderers. There could be a small bit of fatigue with a couple of squad players involved in that game too. So I'm going to edge Cardiff to beat Preston. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Huddersfield versus West Brom. Now, Huddersfield, with their only win so far this season coming at home, it is essential that they've got to get some home points. But they play a rejuvenated, you dare say, West Brom team. Now, they did lose out in the Carabao Cup in a pretty embarrassing way, losing to Derby County of League One. But you've got to look at their previous championship game where they demolished Hull City by five goals to two. By that time, Hull was still unbeaten in the league as well. And I've got to say, we saw in that game exactly what West Brom are capable of. And bearing in mind for how much I've questioned Huddersfield's back line already... I do think West Brom are going to be licking their lips and I think they'll have a lot of enjoyment trying to attack Huddersfield in this game. As a prediction, despite all the talent that Huddersfield do have, I do think West Brom will edge out in quality. I'm going to go for a 2-1 away victory to West Brom. Let me know what you think of that prediction, guys, in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Hull versus Coventry. Now, it's been quite difficult to sum up Coventry so far because obviously they've only played two games this season. This will be their third consecutive away game they've had to play. There has some progress being made from the Coventry Building Society arena so far. We'll definitely get a lot more up-to-date information with um, due course, but it is seemingly that they've got some positive news coming out from um, their home ground this time, which is really encouraging for Coventry fans. They face a whole City team where they've only lost one game so far this season. And I've got to say, Hull City have got some really good players. I'm, I'm really being impressed with their signings. They're right up there, Hull City, for having the best transfer winner. I think two fan and SG Pinion have really adapted to this league very, very well. They're already two standout players or go-to players, I should say, for um, Fantasy League as well for the Championship. So I think both of them will churn in a great performance as well. I think Coventry, with what they've got going for, Giorgares could have a really good game again. I do think both teams, attacking-wise, are very, very strong. It's just whether they'll take their chances. I think Hull will be better at converting chances, but I think Coventry will create more. So as a prediction, I can't actually edge any of them. So I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Let's actually see if we're going to get a real, real goal-scoring game. I don't know why I see both teams being defensively open and both teams going at each other. So I'll go for 2-2. Let me know, you guys, what you think of that in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Middlesbrough versus Swansea. Two teams with a disappointing start to the season. You know, that's an understatement by a long shot. You know, with the signings that they made and the squads that they got, you'd expect both these teams to be right there. But both consecutively are 23rd and 20th place consecutively. It's not good enough. Middlesbrough have not won a game so far this season. In fact, they are one of only two teams Middlesbrough to not win an opening game of the season. And bearing in mind that other teams, Coventry, where they've only had two away games so far. 
Now with Swansea, I've managed to win one game, which is a 1-0 last minute winner against Blackpool. But the rest of it, it's been the same old problems really. Holding onto the ball, trying to break teams down, but it's too slow and predictable. And then eventually they tie up. Teams, you know, hurt them with pace and on the break. Two minute gaps in that back line and they get punished. Russell Martin needs to find a way to find this balance. There's clearly the same issues going on from last year. And if it continues for that little while longer, I do think he will also be under pressure for his job as well, alongside Michael O'Neill for Stoke. As a prediction in this game, you know what? I backed Middlesbrough so many times for a result and they've always let me down. But surely at some point they're going to deliver and I'm going to say they'll narrowly do the trick. I'm going to go 2-1 Middlesbrough due to Swansea's naivety at the back, but I do think... With both of the teams looking defensively surprisingly quite poor, I do think both teams will be able to get on the score sheet, but I think Middlesbrough might edge it. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Middlesbrough. Let me know what you think in the comments. Next game to predict is Mill versus Reading. So, both teams with an alright start to the season, you'd arguably say. So, Millwall up in 10th place at the moment. They did have their second defeat of the season, however, against Norwich City, and they were comprehensively beaten as well. I think in the first half, I didn't really create anything. In the second half, I only had one big chance. The rest of it, it was all Norwich. But their home record, Mill, has pretty much been entirely, you know, immaculate. 100% home record so far this season. So very similar to what I was saying with Swansea. We're seeing the same scenarios of last year going on to this season. Great home record for Millwall, but really bad array record. But they're at home this time at the Den against this Reading team where... They're going to have some tough competition to stop. They've already won three games so far, Reading. But all three of those games have happened at home. In their away games, they've actually conceded an accurate of five goals to nil. I mean, heck, four of those goals came against Rotherham, to be fair. But Reading have still not scored an away goal so far this season, which I think is a little bit of a worry going into this game. Against Mill, where they'll be tough to break down too. I think with this game, despite Reading doing so well, and I'm definitely acknowledging that, I think I'm going to give Mill the edge and the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to go for a 2-0 victory to Mill based on their strong home record and their squad. But let me know, guys, what you think of that prediction in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Rotherham versus Birmingham. Now then, I've actually been edging Birmingham for a couple of my predictions as I've been really harsh on my predictions, you know, in recent years. But... Unfortunately, now for Birmingham, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty difficult season for what I've looked at it now. They're winless in their last three, two defeats in their last three as well. And they've not been great ones. You know, that one recently at home against Wigan where they had an extra man on the pitch for 80 minutes. How they didn't even kill the game is really concerning. And I do think that may be a part of John Eustace lacking that management knowing how to take games, you know, when a scenario changes and applying substitutions, for instance. So I do think while Eustace has got some really good potential about him, I do think he does lack a little bit in terms of his experiences and how to approach different uh, scenarios within the game. Now, with Rotherham, they're unbeaten so far. Only one win, I'll make that clear, but they grinded out to get six points in their opening four games. I mean, a 1-1 draw with Swansea, four nil winners over Reading, a 0-0 draw against Preston, and a 1-1 draw against QPR. Now, one thing I do think Rotherham need to work on is holding the lead. You know, they actually would be up there, Rotherham, with one of the most um, points dropped with winning positions. So, if they can score first, and they can definitely defend, you know, at a really good job against this Birmingham team, I do think they have a chance. And based on how well they were at home against Reading last time, I do think it'll be an intriguing contest. And as a prediction, I've not backed Rotherham for my predictions, so I'll back them this time. I'm going to go for a 2-0 victory to Rotherham. I actually think they've got a positive momentum so far, and I think they'll continue to use it. So I'll say 2-0. Let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. Next game to predict is Watford versus QPR. Now, this for me, I think is the toughest game to predict this weekend. I think Watford, especially with how much their squad has now been depleted of its quality, I think with the links that their front three have already been getting, they've lost one of them, confirmed with Emmanuel Dennis. 
Sars deal with Villa looks like it's broken down, but it doesn't mean that there could be a potential twist in the tail there. And Jao Pedro is looking very close to joining Newcastle as it stands as well. So this is going to heavily disrupt the team. It means Isuf and Ray Minaj are going to have to really step up in that attacking play. We could maybe see Keenan Davis get a mention and maybe an appearance as well since he's signed for them quite recently. They also made a signing on Courtney House, which I think is a good defensive signing from Aston Villa. But with QPR, the reason why is this is also so difficult, they're just so unpredictable. They're, I, I think I would dare say QPR are up there for being the most unpredictable team this season. You know, you see them beating Middlesbrough by three goals to two, and then they draw 2-2 two -two with Sunderland, and then they sandwich that off with two poor results, you know, against Rotherham as well with a draw, and then they lose 1-0 to Blackpool. They're just so incredibly unpredictable QPR for me. And I do think they'll be up for it. And I think Chris Willock will be a difference maker. But for some reason, I do see with Watford, with the amount of clean sheets they've already kept this season, and with QPR potentially, if they don't have their full strikers on their day, I think it'll be a draw blank. I've not predicted many nil-nil draws. And sometimes I feel like I've got to predict a game that doesn't necessarily always stand out as a nil-nil draw. And I feel like this game could potentially be one of those. So... I'll go for a 0-0 draw and a Daniel Batman masterclass in goal. We'll see what happens with that. But let me know what you think of those predictions in the comments down below. Final game to predict, guys, is Wigan versus Burnley. You can arguably say a little bit of a local game between those two teams there. Burnley have been the other team to go through to the third round of the Cowboy Cup, beating Shrewsbury by one goal to nil. And it was actually Bastion who got the only goal in that game. So congratulations to Burnley. Bristol City and Blackburn, the three Bs are through to round three. Now, with this game, I'm really intrigued because Wigan have definitely been another team and also a Coventry where I've not seen a lot of actually. You know, they were one of the few teams that couldn't play their game against Coventry based on the CBS Arena. But after now closely observing what Wigan are all about, I do think they are actually, you know, one of the best teams in terms of adapting to situations. You know, Liam Richardson deserves a lot of credit to have his team go down to 10 men so early, manage it for 80 minutes and still get three points. I mean, that is top class management from Liam Richardson and actually great desire and play from his squad as well. So a lot of players in Wigan and everyone actually involved with Wigan deserves a lot of credit considering the really bad position they were at at one stage when they were in administration to get to this stage now. It is quite a remarkable story. Now, Burnley have only won one game in their opening five games so far this season. And I do think if they don't get another win here, I do think company will start getting questions. I think the expectations, especially with the three recently relegated clubs, is going to be very, very massive. And one win in six is just not good enough for a recently relegated team if it does happen. And in terms of my predictions, that's exactly what I'm predicting. I actually think Wigan are good enough to get something here right now. I think they've got the clinical players. I think they can frustrate Burnley for enough. And I think defensively, they can definitely do a job on them. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw, actually, in this game. Let me know, guys, what you think of that prediction note in the comments down below. So, guys, these are all my predictions now done and complete. Also, guys, make sure you comment your predictions as well so you guys can be involved in the Let's Let's Football Prediction League for the Championship. The Premier League will be released tomorrow. But if you guys like what you see, please give the video a like. It just reminds you up the channel. Please do hit the subscribe button if you uh, want a new round here and you want to see more content from me. It really does help the growth of this channel. And please also share the channel too. All of that really helps too. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for Sony in this video. As always, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone.